Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some and peace out to the rest of you. You already know who it is, what I'm going to ask you to do and why I will ask you to do it. So let me get straight to the message. After learning more about CISBIM, I want to start off by thanking Dwight Hayes, Don Calypso, Mad Bus Driver, intentionally and unintentionally. They have put me up, got me hip to what the tenets of CISBIM are and uh, what the um, framework is by which to define it. Jay Sean Random um, may have been right about something, and that is that I probably do not qualify to be called CISBIM, and that's okay. I'm going to defend the right of CISBIM to get passports and to leave behind the Western black woman. However, I'm also going to advise the CISBIM to uh, make something clear for the younger or newer CISBIM coming in. And a lot of you are not going to agree with me at first, but at least hear why I say what I'm going to say. Um, I may not qualify to be called such because I didn't even get my passport for any reasons having to do with the Western black woman, but um, a Western black woman did have a lot to do with me getting my passport. Maybe subconsciously it did, but consciously I only knew of financial things and some spiritual things too. I pretty much, I mean, as a Muslim, we do believe in hijra. And I had decided I was never going to live under white jurisdiction again. So pretty much the next time a white person has authority over me, it's going to be because we signed a contract with the clear rules and limits of their authority outlined. And outside of the contract, they'll have none. End of story. But what's important is that uh, the other reason I may not qualify, and I'm going to explain the situation that happened so that you understand where I'm going. In 2018, I took my summer vacation and I came back to this country early to do some summer work and make some extra coin. In doing so, um, I was in the WhatsApp group with the rest of the teachers. Female teachers teach female students and male teachers teach male students. However, the WhatsApp group for the teachers was the same. Of course, I once uh, was talking to the male teachers in the WhatsApp group, explaining how I was going to advise, uh, explain to them, I advise you teachers to not focus on the students that are lazy because they're going to lie. It's best to have little interaction with them until they raise their hands to try because they're willing to lie. They've already started doing it. Of course, one of the female teachers, an African-American named Khadija, felt the need to uh, digitally roll her neck and snap her fingers and roll her eyes and, you know, tell me something because the African-American woman has to do this to the African-American man in many cases and she knew I was African-American because my name in the group was Blackheart. So she felt the need to go ahead and tell me something. No, we don't just throw away students because they're not good in English. We're English teachers, and that's our job to get them there. And I told her, I understand that. But it's also the student's job to try. And I'm not talking about throwing away the students who just don't speak English already. I'm talking about throwing the ones away who don't know anything, and they're willing to lie, and they don't want you to try to get them there. They're just there to get the credit for going to the class. We can't focus on them because they're already focusing. They're already planning what lies they're going to tell. That's what I'm getting at. If you think that was bad, let me tell you this. When I did this, one of the local teachers who's from here, female teacher, but who was fluent in English because she's one of the English teachers, began to defend the men I was getting on. And I made it clear one time, ma'am, listen, I forgot what her name is. Uh, maybe it was, maybe her name was Yasmin. <laughs> I said to her, Yasmin, let me explain this to you once. I am not talking about any student of yours because I don't teach female students. I've heard that they're generally better than the males, but I never taught them, except electronically. 
I'm not talking about any of the male students that are related to you that I know of. I'm only talking about the lazy ones. That's it. And in, in addition to them, I'm only talking about the lazy ones who cheat and lie. They're already plotting their lies on the teachers who make them try and work. That's what I'm talking about. Do not defend the students I'm talking about because they're bad students. I mean morally bad because they're already plotting how they're going to lie on us. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the students who are quiet. I'm not talking about the students that are, um, uh, that are strong students and that are making the effort. I'm not talking about the students that are bad in English, but they're still trying. I'm talking about the ones who are bad in the subject and they're trying to come up with ways to get the credit and the rewards without actually doing the work. And she started to defend them again. And that was when I said this conversation is over. I will not treat a bad student, and I mean a bad behaved student, the same way I'm going to treat a good student. I will never treat those two the same, and God's not going to treat the sinner the way he treats the saint, because they haven't earned the same reward. I'm not going to be unfair to the good students by treating the bad ones just like I would treat them. If that's the case, there's no reason to be a good student. I told her that. And that this was the end of the conversation. I'm mentioning this to you for a reason, and that is that, you see, we see the same phenomena in the black community in the West. The 92 octane that does not live the idness lifestyle and does not um, get involved in these things still will try to get with the men that are idness, and she will defend other women like her that chase down the idness men. So... She's not like that. She makes sacrifices. She's not lazy. And she's not trifling in her own personal life. She just likes the men who are. And you know this because if she does, she will defend. Even if she doesn't chase those men, she will defend her friend who's 92 octane and chases down those men that are like that. Now, this is reason enough for us to look at the 92 octanes and say, okay, there may be some good ones among them too, but we're not going to find them. They're too rare. We got to leave alone the Western black woman. We're done. Is that not the reason that you say this? Understandably so. Is this not reason enough for me to look at uh, the pale Gulf Arab woman? And, and I mean, talking about the pale Gulf Arab women. Is it not reason enough for me to look at them and say, you're defending the crap even when you don't engage in it. So this is reason enough for me to look at you all categorically and say, no, nah, bitch, step back. I'm not interested in pursuing a marriage with one of you. Do you understand? I've drawn a parallel here. What does this have to do with CISBIM? It's simple. You're going to find that... Uh, the women of certain other ethnicities that uh, have problems with us, <laughs> what I mean is that the women who come from an ethnicity and that ethnicity has problems with us may not have the same problems with us that the rest of their ethnicity or the majority of their ethnicity have with us. However, what happens if they defend some of their friends who do? Well, she's afraid of black men. Oh, and that's your homegirl? Yeah. So what's she afraid of black men for? I mean, has, hasn't she heard from you that we're just, just as different as other Japanese men? Hasn't she heard from you that, she, that we're just as different from each other as Arab men are? Hasn't she heard from you that we're just as different from each other as Indian men are different from each other? As Pakistani men are different? As Afghan men are different from each other? She hasn't heard this from you? What the hell have you been doing if you're her friend? Do you understand now what I'm getting at? You, many of you Cispin brothers, don't care if a blood gets out there and finds him a white stargate, a white Arab stargate, meaning a non-black Arab, because they call themselves white if they're not black. Um, a stargate from Western Europe, uh, which is white. You understand? An Indian stargate, a Pakistani stargate, an Afghan stargate. Now, if she's from Bangladesh, I'm kind of neutral because I understand the Bengalis. I don't really know them to have a hatred for us. <laughs> but you understand what I'm getting with this? Judge the woman by her ethnicity. Not because she individually has to be the same, but understand that you need some kind of proof that nobody in her family is going to mistreat you or her because she's with you or your children. 
You need to know this. You need to be clear about this. If you cannot verify that, then assume it's going to happen and bounce and get you a woman who comes from a background that has not been disrespectful towards us because of our race. That's why we need to give preference to non ados black women, non-Western black women. It ain't because of Hotep. It's not why. It's pragmatic. That's why. Plus, we have the most genetic diversity, period, both of our gender, so we might as well go ahead and uh, maintain some of it. Now, there are brothers who sisters don't want. I get it. See if sisters in other countries don't want you. And if they only seem to want you when you're a hell of a lot wealthier than they are, then, of course, you may say, okay, well, sisters in general don't want me, Western or not. Okay, all right. Maybe you find that women of other ethnicities want you more and they will approach you. Okay, all right. <laughs> if they will approach you, then they're more likely to not have to deal with the fallout from their particular families anyway. So if Indian women approach you, which is rare, but if they're doing it and they're cute <laughs> and their families ain't tripping, then of course you have every re there's every reason that you would do this. If Kitty Jones was approached by his current wife and her family was not tripping and I heard that that's what happened anyway it makes sense that he got with her it makes sense I understand it I'm cool with that but when many of you get out there I want you to be clear about the fact that we still have to vet non-black women because I want younger and newer CISPIM guys that are just now coming into it to still understand the dangers of getting with women from other backgrounds I want them to be aware of this. This is a serious and real possibility. From harm coming from maybe not the woman, but from some of her family members, because there are people out there who generally they're not violent. But I want you to understand that there's still some of them who will become violent. Because they don't want their relative with no nigger. Some of them will become violent because they don't want their relative with a foreigner. Period. Anybody that's not them. But some will become violent because they don't want their relative with a nigger, with a jigaboo, with a porch monkey. They don't want your wide nose and big lip ass running all up in their, fem uh, their female relative, giving them little half black relative kids and they'll mistreat your kids. And you need to be aware of this. You need to know these real dangers. This is why. Uh. This is why I'm recommending that even if you're CISPIM, you still give preference to non-Western black women first, unless you know that they just don't like you. Now, that's a different story. Even then, you go with the women, give preference to the women that do like you the most, and you'll know because they'll have the most to offer and still show you the most interest. In that case, I get it. But do not get into this. <laughs> Don't jump into system and then start thinking, man, I'm finna go out here. I'm going to pursue. Um, uh, I'm going to pursue a uh, pimp porn from China. And that's actually a Thai, I mean, Thailand. And that's actually a Thai name. Pimp porn. So don't think you I'm, I'm going to go and pursue pimp porn. She's from Thailand. And, you know, she digs brothers. Yeah. OK. What? How does the family feel? Because see, Thailand is not like the rest of Southeast Asia. I understand. In most of Southeast Asia, they're down with brothers. As a matter of fact, if you want to hear about Southeast Asian women scamming men out of their money, most of those men that get scammed are white because Southeast Asian women actually seem to have a preference for brothers over white men. I mean, they like foreigners in general, but when it comes to who they would actually like to be with, I mean, if they want to share the Western money, it's probably with a brother. If they want to take that Western money and run, it's probably from a white dude. But Thailand's not like that. You need to know this. So check into it, look into it, understand. Now, Cambodia is different. They ain't got no anti-black issues for the most part that I know of. <laughs> so it makes sense. Okay, you say, okay, I'm CISPIM. I'm finna hit up Cambodia. <laughs> I'm on approach some. Okay, well, you know, I'm only recommending marriage anyway because I'm Muslim. And I got to put that disclaimer in here. But what I'm getting at is that if you're going to look for marriage, you understand that you look for it with women who don't traditionally, whose people don't come from an anti-black standpoint. Thailand, it's developing. Not the Philippines, not Cambodia, not Laos, not Vietnam, not Malaysia, not Indonesia. But Thailand, yeah. Japan, yeah. 
China and Korea, oh, don't get me started on that. They make the ties and uh, I mean, they'll make the ties and the Japanese look like our friends, our closest allies. That's real, but no, <laughs> I'm sorry. China and Korea, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. One reason they get along with each other so much is because they don't really look up to us. So, no, sorry, but can't do that. You see, if you get with a Korean woman, not only do you have to settle for a smaller butt and smaller chest, which still could be cool, but you also have to understand, she will, it is a standard, one of her standards by which she's judging you is that you can take it when she talks about those blacks over there, not you, but them, the ones that rob white people at the ATM. You gotta sit there and listen and understand and agree. But if you start talking about those Koreans that put on skin bleach, she, she's not, she doesn't have to be patient with that. That's why I say you got a veteran. You got to be militant when you do. That's all I'm saying. You still got a veteran from a pro-black standpoint. You must do it because even if the black community in the U.S. or in the West in general can't be saved, you still have to vet them with some kind of pro-black militant standard so as to weed out the high possibility of them coming with, at you with some anti-black BS later or trying to defend a relative who does. That's what I'm getting at. I hope that this has been a benefit. Thank you for being patient. Black heart, sign a blackout. Salam alaikum.